Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Octacon Jordan. Welcome back. Oladiz versus Mavov. Pretty shitty card. So I'm not going to go over the whole card. I'm just going to give you guys a couple locks that I have. The underdog of the week. A uh, couple highlights on the card. A couple people to look out for. A couple prospects to look out for. Glad to be back. Let's let's jump right into the card. We got Doladiz versus Mavov. Let's start off with the main event. Fuck it. Doladiz. So I know... There's a rumor going around, you know, a little birdie was telling me that he's been getting some new training in, in the bedroom with uh, Cheyenne Velismus. Uh, he's doing a lot of, I think it's yoga or maybe it was Zumba. I forget exactly what the rumor was, but just a lot of new innovative workouts, kind of taking the Tony Ferguson approach, but uh, a two person approach with uh, Cheyenne Velismus. So his cardio, I fully expect him to be in great shape. Uh, definitely able to make off. Every <laughs> I'm just kidding. But yeah, Dolades, I think uh, he's an absolute savage. Knocked the shit out of Phil Halls. Uh, had a mean calf slicer on Jack Hermanson. His grappling second to none. He's always attacking. He never is just taking it easy on his back. He's always going for a heel hook or a inverted triangle, um, arm bar, something crazy. I think he's going to be too dangerous for Imavov over the five rounds. <sighs> Imavov, I know a lot of people are picking him in this fight. I only see one way of winning for Imavov. I think it's by points. I think it's by decision. I don't see Imavov KO in Dalidze or Dolides. I don't see that happening. I don't think Imavov's KO'd anybody in the UFC so far. Dolides is an absolute brute of a man. He's got more chest hair than the whole card combined, at least, you know, via topology pictures here. I think the five rounds is going to be too much time for him to find a finish. I think Delize can knock out him off. He's got heavy hands. He's not one of those guys that's going to jab to the body and try to win on points and, you know, dance around and faint and wait till the last round. No, 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 no. This motherfucker does not care about points. He's trying to knock your block off. He's trying to KO you. Or if it gets to the ground, he's trying to grapple you. He's trying to snap one of your limbs. He's trying to take your neck. He's trying to finish the fight. I think five rounds is going to be too much time for him to find a finish. I think it's going to be looking good for Yamavov in the early rounds. I think he's going to be touching him up, even using his footwork, using it, you know, being light on his feet, hitting uh, Delize with the jab. Delize might, you know, take a couple rounds to find his range. But I think once the third, fourth round comes around, he's either going to start shooting for takedowns, get Yamavov to the ground. I think he could submit Yamavov, or I think he could find that shot in one of the rounds, whether it's second round, third round, fourth round, fifth round. I just think five rounds is too much time for Delize to to find that kill shot or find that, you know, great submission where he, he puts Imavov away. I think the only chance Imavov has in this fight is to win by decision. And I think, like I said, I think it's just too much time for Delize um, to find a finish, especially with his newfound cardio, doing the yoga with Cheyenne Velismus guy looks in incredible shape. So that's my underdog pick of the week. I am two for two to start the year off. The Octagon Jordan main event have been smacking, absolutely cashing, cash those tickets. Uh, first fight card, I had Magomed Ankalaev. That smacked. Uh, last card, I had Dreykus Duplessis. That smacked. I also predicted Dreykus to beat on Strickland and then go on to main event UFC 300 against Israel Adesanya. And that's looking like the front runner right now for the main event there at UFC 300. So my main event picks have been all good. hundred percent batting average so far. And I'm picking Dolades by stoppage either in the fourth or fifth round. Not sure if it's going to be submission or knockout. If I had to pick one, I would go submission, but take Dolades. Um, and the main event streak continues for Octagon Jordan. Thank you. Hanato Meccano. Money. Meccano likes money. And I also make shitty YouTube content. I, I never watch Hanato Meccano's YouTube content. I just see he doesn't speak good English. Not that I, you know, I don't blame him for it. He's Brazilian. I'm not going to watch YouTube content when it's broken English. So I, I don't know who watches his shit, but he is a good fighter. Uh, he's coming off a couple wins. I know that. He's looked better at 155-pound weight class. He looks healthier. He doesn't look as drained. He looks like he's got more energy. Um, obviously, he got brutalized by RDA. He got knocked out by Rafael Faziv. And now he's fighting the knockout king of the lightweight division, Drew Dober. Ah, do I go another underdog? Dober, Delize, Double D, Double DP. 
Dober Doladiz, Cheyenne Velismus. Maybe they DP Cheyenne Velismus. Double D, Dober Delize, Double Dog, Double Dog Daria, Double Underdog Pick, Dober Delize, DP after the fights, Cheyenne Velismus. I'm going Dober Knockout. Boop! Moicano coming off a leg injury. I don't want to say he's chinny, but, you know, he got rocked by Fazeev. He got knocked out by Korean Zombie. He got brutalized by RDA. Obviously, he can win this fight by submission. Dober's shown to be susceptible to submissions. Obviously, got subbed by the now champ Islam Makashev. No shame there. Got subbed by Benil Daryush, but that was centuries ago. Um, got knocked out by Matt Steamroller for Vola. But early stoppage. I was actually at that fight in Newark, Delaware. I think they should have kept it going. Yeah, Dober always goes out on shield. He always has a fun fight. He's not scared to get in the pocket and swing and bang. And I see him finding Moicano's chin. I think the layoff's going to be tough for Moicano to find his rhythm, especially against a go-getter like Drew Dober, who right when the bell rings, he's going to be in your face. He's going to come at you. That's not a matchup that I think is good for Moicano coming off the, the knee injury. So I'm going double D, double dog, double dog Daria, DP, Doladiz Dober, lock it in. Randy Rudeboy versus Muslim Salikoff. I see this one going. I see Randy Brown being extra rude in this fight. Being very, very rude. No glove touch at the beginning. Maybe Salikoff comes out right when the bell rings. Trying to tap hands. You know, doing the old, hey, hey, hey. I think Randy, Randy Brown might even hit him with the fake hand tap. The fake hand touch. That's how rude I think Randy Brown's going to get in this one. Oh, yeah, yeah, I got you, Salikoff. Boom, to the liver. And then boom, upstairs. That's how I see this one going. I think he's going to bully him. <sighs> no, but actually, uh, I do think Randy Brown's going to win. I think it's going to be a late stoppage. I don't know if Sally Call's cardio is going to hold up because he has to get on the inside of Randy Brown's range. Obviously, Sally Call's pushing 40 years old. Randy Brown, I think, is going to stay on the outside. Jab, 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 leg kick, calf kick. Sally Call could get winded trying to you know blitz, get on the inside, hit his big shots, his spinning techniques. So I could see Randy Brown pulling out a pretty decisive decision or maybe getting a late stoppage. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to predict Randy Brown by third round stoppage. I think it's going to be extra rude. I think he's going to hit him with a couple extra shots before the ref steps in. So uh, we'll see. Arujo versus Natalia Silva. It's a good fight. Silva, you know, she's attractive. She's attractive. She's pretty, pretty cute girl. Um, I want to see more finishing ability out of Silva, though. Obviously, she's good with the kicks. I know she had a spinning back kick uh, KO that, that beat uh, Blada. I want to see her get a little bit better with the hands, better boxing. Maybe we see that in this fight. I know Rujo, obviously, she's built. She's muscular. Doesn't have a ton of movement. Head movement's not really there. Not many feints. Not much. She's just not very tactical. I don't think uh, Kenny Florian would, would like her much as a fighter. She just doesn't have much to her game other than being strong, being tough, and that's pretty much it. So I, I don't know. I I think it's either Silva by decision or Silva by stoppage. I would like to say Silva by stoppage because that's what I would like to see out of her is really get mean, really get brutal, maybe get the boxing going, like I said, hit her upstairs. But I think the safe pick here is definitely Silva by decision, definitely. Next fight we got Kaz Kazriev versus Mahmoud Meridov. Kazriev, 14 and 0 versus Mahmoud Meridov. Mahmoud Meridov is an absolute scrub ass. Uh, had a very competitive fight with Gerald Mearshart. Lost to Cal Baraglio. I mean, he just, he, he's overrated. Has no ground game. Gas tank's very questionable. Obviously, he's a good kickboxer, but at this level in the UFC, facing an undefeated Russian, Kazriev. It's just a terrible matchup, and I think they're feeding him to Kizraev. I think they're trying to get Kizraev a, a win here. Miradov, I don't really think has much of a chance in this one. We've seen him gas. We've seen him get taken down before. I don't think he's that dangerous on the feet, honestly. I know he had you know that one highlight reel KO when the guy's mouthpiece went fucking crazy, but I think this is a terrible matchup for for Miradov. So I'm going Kizraev. Gilbert Urbina versus Charles Radke. That's ah, a good fight. Charles Radke, I want to see him win just so we could see more colorful language after the fact. I know it's at the apex, so he might not be too riled up by the crowd. But, you know, they get they get 100, 200 motherfuckers in that shit. So, you know, maybe maybe they're booing him. Maybe he just grinds out your bean up against the fence like he did his last fight and holds him in the clinch. And it's really super fucking boring. And he gets pissed again, drops a couple F-bombs. Free speech. 
free speech. I'm about it. You know, Dana don't give a bullocks. So, hey, get this guy on the microphone see what he says. Uh, that's pretty much all I'm looking forward to there. Meepo Molly versus Diana Belbita. I don't know. Both low-level women. I think uh, Meepo Molly has potential as maybe a, a marketing, you know, person, someone that's good for, for promotion. She's never going to be a champ. We've seen that, you know, when she's upped her level to Aaron Blanchfield, Talia Santos. Just hasn't worked out for her, but she's got a lot of personality. I think if they keep her at this level, she could keep winning the UFC, keep her job, uh, beef up some of those London cards, get her on the undercard with Patty the Batty. You know, she's a good attraction for the London crowd, and she has a little steam under her name from the Dave Portnoy barstool connection, but the skills aren't really there to, to make it to the top level of the sport. You know, she's never going to fight for a championship belt, but – She's already beat Diana Belbita, so I could definitely see it happening again. Beat Paul Motley. Don't like the line, though. Wouldn't bet it. Probably would bet. I don't know. I'd probably just stay away from this fight. But Meepo Motley by stoppage is probably a good pick. Charles Johnson versus Asmont Maxim. Maxim really didn't show me much in his last fight against uh, Tyson Nam, but Charles Johnson lost me a sick parlay I had last time. So I fucking hate Charles Johnson. He sucks. I think he loses this fight. I think he gets cut. Honestly, I do. Grappling defense is not there. Striking's just not dangerous. I don't know how this guy wins. Maxim for sure. Charles Johnson gets cut. Femba Garimbo. So oh, this guy's going to be a champion. Oh, man, look, look. You inspired me to work hard, man. Yeah, yeah. man. No, I will become a champion. Trust me. Forgive me. Yeah. I'll become a champion. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. I mean, this guy's got the rock in his corner. He has access to... $500 million. He's sleeping in silk sheets in Miami. Welcome to Miami. Yeah, mommy. You heard him say it right there. He's going to be a champion. Now that he's the rock backing him, this guy's eating surf and turf. He's eating flaming yon. He's eating salmon. He's eating scallops, bacon wrapped scallops. I mean, this guy's got it all. I think he's going to come in phenomenal shape. I think he's going to look the best he's ever looked in his fucking life. The Rock might even come back, come out and corner him. Who knows? Uh, Pete Rodriguez, you know, he's 5-1. and one. He knocked the shit out of Mike Jackson. I respect him for that. I like him for that, especially brutalizing Mike Jackson the way he did with that sick knee, busted up Mike Jackson's orbital. So I respect Pete Rodriguez, but like I said, Thema Garimbo's been eating surf and turf, sleeping in silk sheets, fishing off his dock, calling The Rock, texting The Rock. So, I mean, how can you not go with the Garimbo here? I think he's going to go all the way to the championship belt, but it starts with Pete Rodriguez. You heard it here first. You heard it from the horse's mouth. <sighs> what else we got here? If anybody can pick or point out what koozie this is or what brand this is, 10 bucks Venmo. Yeah, it's my favorite shit right there. So, hope you sick fucks like it as well. Blake Builder versus uh, some Asian guy. I don't give a fuck. Blake Builder lost his last fight to Kyle Nelson. Not really sure about the Asian guy, so I don't know. Not going to pick that fight. Probably not even going to watch it. Going to be taking a dump. Going to be running up to ShopRite, getting another six-pack for that fight. Solarenko versus Luana Carolina. Uh, I think out of these two women, the one with the most potential is Solarenko just because of her submission ability. Carolina did have a, a couple nice wins after her loss to Molly McCann. So she could definitely win the fight too. I just think Stolarenko has more upside, even though her record is fucking eleven and seven. But she does have that it that it factor with the submission ability. Luana Carolina, I just don't think she has that it factor. So for that reason, I'm going Stolarenko by submission in that one. Next fight, Quinones versus Medeiros. 50-50. Both guys are young. Both guys are shown promise. Not really sure. Last fight, Thomas Peterson versus Jamal Pogues. Jamal Pogues just, I don't know. He looks like Daniel Cormier, but obviously without the credentials. He has good wrestling, nowhere on Daniel Cormier's level. He's got big, fat arms, so it's hard for him to really get the striking going. His strikes are very slow. It's not very versified. He's not going to the body. He's not hitting you with a surprise left hook, a la Pereira versus Strickland. He's not going to hit you with anything too heavy that you're not going to see. So that's difficult for a heavyweight to not really have that knockout ability because he's just too slow. You know, all his opponents are going to see the shots coming, but he is a good wrestler. 10 and four Thomas Peterson, you know, I'm looking at his tapology photo. He looks, he looks like he's got huge man tits. 
He doesn't really look that imposing. He's a white dude. I've heard that he used to fight at middleweight or should be fighting at middleweight. He is eight and one, but I don't know. Jamal Pogues is, is tough to stop. He's just a big meatball out there and he's got good wrestling. So you're not really going to wrestle Pogues unless you're somebody like a Tom Aspinall or, you know, one of those upper, uh, Curtis Blades, Yelton Almeida. I don't see Peterson subbing Pogues. He could outstrike him because, like I said, Pogues is a little slow, but I'm going to back Pogues in this one. I think he could get it done. Um, yeah, overall, dumpy card, very shitty card. Doladiz versus Mavov at the top. I'm excited for the Dober versus Moicano fight. Um, I do like Doladiz. I think he does have potential. I think he beat Marvin Vittori in his last fight. Like I said, he's been doing a lot of those Tony Ferguson workouts with Cheyenne Velismas. Uh, he's been growing out his chest hair. He's been working on his, you know, his meat mug, and he's looking to KO a motherfucker like he did Phil Halls. <sighs> what he did to fucking Phil Halls, man. Jesus. I know everybody does that to Phil Halls, but damn, that shit was violent. Whew. And then what he did to um, Dalkus. I just watched that fight again. Holy shit. I was actually golfing at the time. I had to bet on uh, Delize. Can you believe Roman Delize was plus 200 against Kyle Dalkus when they fought? Plus 200. That just goes to show that there's people on this card and future cards that are plus 200 that are just so much better than their opponent, and nobody knows it yet. So it's up to me and you to find out who those motherfuckers are so we can cash out. But yeah, Delete Day brutalized Dalkus, held his face down against the cage and hit him with a sick knee. It made a disgusting sound, sounded like Khalil Roundtree versus Johnny Walker. It was absolutely sickening. Uh, so I just think, like I said prior in this video, the five rounds is going to be too much time. Dole with ease. He's going to find a sub. He's going to find a KO, and he's going to win the fight. And that's going to be three for three main event picks for your boy, Octagon Jordan. He's also my underdog of the week, Dolidze. Parlaying with Drew Dober. Dober, Dolidze. Double DP of Cheyenne after the fight. And we're all winning. We're all celebrating. So thank you, boys. I'll see you in the next video.